Welcome to another DCS tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at the mission editor and specifically static objects. For any good mission, immersion is key. We can achieve that through audio and speech clips as well as setting moving ground units. Static objects, however, aren't so resource hungry and so you can use far more of them. However, some of that immersion is lost when you return to base and everything is just the same as when you left. And that's especially true when returning to a carrier where nothing is ever at a standstill. Unfortunately, the mission editor itself doesn't let us remove static objects. So we once again need to use scripting. And once again, I've created a tool to do all the hard work for us. So anyone with no scripting knowledge needn't panic. It's all covered. Before we start, we're going to watch the script in action and see what we're trying to achieve. But bear in mind, I have set the triggers to action after a period of time. Whereas in your missions, you'd probably set them to change once you enter or leave a given area. Okay, we're in the mission and I'm here at uh, Kutasi and you can see that I have an F-117 opposite me with a couple of guards and some ground crew I'm in the plane. Beside me, I have some less impressive helpers. I've also created a carrier which is set up with just a couple of Tomcats and a Hornet and also a few items of deck equipment. Any time now, the Hornet and the deck equipment will disappear, leaving just the Tomcats. And now we'll introduce a Hawkeye onto the rear elevator. Let's now head back to Kotoasi and in a few moments we should see the F-117 depart. There it goes and it'll now be replaced by a single soldier and a fire truck, after which the fire truck will also disappear. And finally, I'm going to get some company by the way of some A-10s, but with their top speed, they should probably be airborne already. That's it, static objects created and removed as and when we see fit. For more single missions, you'll probably only want one change, which is a setup at mission start and something different for when you return but we have the ability to do as much or as little as you see fit. Let's now look at how we get it done. We now have the mission editor in the background, which we'll come to later. But first we're going to look at the script generator tool, which I've created. And as you can see, it's an Excel spreadsheet. If you don't have Excel, then don't worry, there are online tools such as Google Sheets, which are completely free. The tool has several worksheets, but first we're going to look at the static script generator sheet. And already here are the entries which I created for the demo earlier. So we can see the F-14s, the Hornet, the ground units, etc. As you fill in each entry in columns A through to K, the script to build that item will automatically be created in column M. We could input all this data manually, but in reality it's going to be very difficult to do so, as we probably don't know the map coordinates, unit names, livery names, etc. Instead, what we'll do is create a temporary mission inside the mission editor. And this is the template I created previously with the F117, the ground crew, etc. 
but just to reiterate these will not be in the final mission I've just created a single template as I only have a few units to manage across only three creation events. If you're adding dozens of entries across several different events, then you might want to create separate templates so it's easier to manage. It's a good idea to give each static unit a sensible name as it will make your life much easier later on. And if you're going to link any items, for example, an aircraft to a ship, then you should take note of the ship's ID at this point. Once you're happy, simply save the mission, giving it either a temporary name, or if you want to reuse it, maybe give it a more suitable name, caucus template, or whatever you see fit. You now need to browse to the mission file you've just saved and open it up. It's just an archive, so you can use WinZip or whatever you have. And here I'm going to be using 7-Zip. Inside the archive are several files, and we are going to open the mission file using any text editor such as Notepad. Once open, we are going to search for the units we just created. In Notepad, you can search for the string unit ID, which will find all the units you've created. But I know I created an F14, so I will search just for that. And here is our entry for the F14. And you can see we have lots of fields, some of which match almost all of the entries that we have in the spreadsheet. So we simply need to copy across the relevant fields and paste them in. You should note that not every static unit has every field. For example, planes don't have a shape name, so we we'll simply leave those blank. Livery IDs can also usually be left blank, which will then use the default. But if you want to specify a livery, you can. You can see that there are two sets of coordinates. The bottom set is the map location and the top entry is the offset. The non-linked units, these will be the same, but for linked units, we'll only need the offset, which is the coordinates relative to the linked unit. In this case, the center of the supercarrier. If it's not a linked unit, then there is no angle, but just a heading and is measured in radians, which is easy enough. You can simply copy that into the spreadsheet. If it is a linked unit, we see some odd behavior as radians should only go up to 6.28, which is 2 pi. Here we are seeing 49.8 which is 2,854 degrees or seven full circles and an additional 334 degrees, which is actually what we're looking for. But I've got no idea why it's not showing 5.8 radians, which is just a simple 334 degrees. Another thing to know is that the angle is relative to the flight deck, which on the supercarrier has a nine degree offset to the ship. But this will be different for other carriers and ships, such as the Tarawa. So looking back at the spreadsheet, you can see that I have included that data in columns D through to K. All we have to do now is fill in the country ID the link ID, which we noted before, and finally, a group name, which we will come back to later. And the script is then automatically generated in column M. That will create a single static entry, and you simply need to repeat for each static unit that you want to appear or disappear mid-mission. So let's create the Lua file for the startup trigger now. All we need to do is highlight the entries which we want, 
So here it's rows 4 through to 20. Select copy and paste into a text editor. Then all we need to do is save that file, giving it an appropriate file name and location. And I would recommend having a scripts folder within your missions folder. I'm going to call this mission start.lua and make sure you change the file type so it's not saved as a text document. You'll need one Lua for each creation event. So I will repeat for the fire truck. And again for the air tens. We just need to save those two other scripts as Lua files as we did before. And uh, then we can run each one via a trigger to create the static objects automatically. So that's the scripts done. Let's now take a look at the removal scripts. All we need here is to enter the coalition, which needs to match the country. So USA is usually blue. And the only other thing we need is to enter who to delete. And this is why we need to think of a sensible naming convention. This script does not allow us to select multiple rows. So we either have to have one script per unit, which would be a nightmare, but we can use wildcards. So our first entry is carrier stage 2.star, and that deletes all units which start with that name. As before, we need to highlight each script and paste it into our text editor and save as a Lua file. But remember here, it's only one entry per file. This will remove the Hornet and the deck equipment. This will remove the F-117 and its ground units. And this will just remove the fire truck. That's all that's needed for the removal scripts. So let's run through the rest of the spreadsheet before we take a look at the editor. First of all is the tool I mentioned earlier to convert to radiance. Then these next sheets are a large but not comprehensive set of static units within the game. You don't actually need these as you can get this information from the method we showed earlier. But if you wanted to replace my Grim Reapers F-14 say with an F-16 from the 23rd Fighter Squadron, then simply using this data is far easier than having to mess around with the editor and searching the mission files. I haven't done every unit, but I have done most non-World War II units, and for ground units I have generally added summer, winter and desert camo if available. I literally couldn't be asked doing it anymore, as it was pretty laborious. Finally, I have a list of country codes, which I think is accurate at the time of writing, but I am aware that these do change over time, with Eagle Dynamics adding more countries. And that's the spreadsheet done, so let's head back into the editor and pull it all together. If you recall the demo at the start of this video, in addition to the static objects which we were creating and deleting, there was also some regular static units and some active units like the F-16 and the AAV, which are present here in the editor. What isn't present is the F-117 and its ground units. So let's take a look at the triggers and see how they are generated. The first trigger is activated at mission start, of course, and so doesn't need a condition. The action 
is a do script file and we simply point that to the Lua file which we created first which was the mission start dot Lua all of the remaining triggers are set to action once and at present have a condition to activate after a set amount of time the action is also one of the Lua files we used to create or delete units which we built earlier. In your missions you don't really want to use time as a condition. You want the triggers to activate when you're out of sight. So the easiest way to do this in single player is to create a zone like I've created here and change the condition so that the trigger condition is met when the aircraft is outside of that zone and that's all we need when we run the mission it will be like the demo but now the f117 will only disappear once my aircraft is a mile to the runway if you like this video please do hit like and do subscribe which will then notify you of my next video, which will hopefully be coming soon. Thank you.